Welcome, ladies. Sorry, I just drank your water. You drank my water? Yeah. Do you want mine? I mean, can I have yours? You can have mine. Okay. Here. <laughs> Thank you. We gotta get that sorted out before we start. <laughs> it's gonna be a long night. Um, so, I premiered last night at the Tribeca Film Festival. I was at the world premiere. Played like gangbusters with the crowd. I personally just am such a huge fan. It's a lot of fun. I recommend you all check it out. It's also screening tonight, correct? No. No, it's no. screening tomorrow night tomorrow at 9. Night. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, we premiered last night, sold out screenings, wonderful reception. That's awesome. Yeah, really fun. So how's this ride been so far for all of you? It's been really great. I mean, we shot, we shot last summer, end of summer. So we haven't, you know, all been together since then. And yeah. it's just really fun to come back together. And, you know, I think we, we really bonded during the shoot because we were staying in a small town and, you know, all staying in the same Best Western. Uh -huh. <laughs> in the same <laughs> hallway. Yeah, in the same hallway. <laughs> For so many it's, months. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like reunion. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to welcome you back to Tribeca. This is your second time here. You last had a short film here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we had the a web, web show film. called web Be show. Here Nowish that we premiered last year with the Now program. Okay. So when did the development for Bear start? So it started, I had been writing the screenplay for a little while on my own and had been talking to other producers prior to meeting Alexandra and you know, there were people interested in the project but it was just taking such a long time to make it happen and the producers who were on it were, um, they had you know, a lot of other filmmakers who are well known who were always just like the next project up so I kept getting bumped and then yeah. You know, Alexander and I started working together and finally we were like, sh shared the script to her and we were like, we have to make this happen. So once that was uh, last December that we started financing. Yeah, that. we just were like, let's just do this now. We want to do it. Um, how can we do it? Let's make it happen. And we did really quickly. We pulled together the financing and then somehow managed to attach really amazing cast. Yeah. Um, and we went to New Mexico and we shot it. And for us, it was the biggest project that we had done together. Uh, as a team from the ground up, which was, yeah, a feat. Feat that you accomplished beautifully. Now, Natalia, can you tell me, um, what was my question? I had a good one. Oh, exactly, <laughs> what the film is about, because there's obviously no trailer cut. The film just premiered last night. It's still seeking distribution. So for everyone here who didn't check it out last night, what exactly is it about? So the film is about a young girl living in a small town in Nevada, played by Diana Agron, and she becomes involved with another woman played by Paz de la Huerta and Paz's character is kind of like a drifter in the town that comes in and is doing some schemes and um, doing some drug deals and sort of ropes Diana into this other world that is um, convinces her to get a job at the strip club or it's sort of questionable if that was really her influence or not but that her life kind of turns upside down from that and it's these two worlds colliding and the consequences of it. What inspired it? So it's inspired by personal um, events in my life and relationships in my life. Although it's not autobiographical, I didn't grow up in Nevada. I actually grew up in Brazil, so there's a lot of fiction in it for sure. And it's sort of like an allegory of a moment in my life. Okay. Do you wish to tell more about what that? <laughs> um, I think, like for for me, the core of it, the story, is when I was, you know, in my late teens, early twenties, and figuring out what my placement is in this world and for me this the core realization was when I through the influence of someone else in my life I realized that I could be the ultimate creator of my reality and how empowering that was okay. to be able to reinvent yourself and that you know whether whatever background you come from and whatever uh, plan has been laid out by your family or your hometown or your social economic background that you have the ability to shift that yeah. and so for me this that was the core motivation for the story which is like this girl figuring out that she could completely turn her reality upside down and make her own choice in life. Okay. So it sounds a lot it's like a the character ambiguous. played by Diana is you know yeah. kind of uh, based on you in a way. Did you and Diana have a lot of talks about that fact um, to really really kind of you know dig deep and uncover the character? We did, yeah. We, we didn't have a lot of time face to face because she was on another film literally the night before our film started. But we had met and had some phone calls and then we were all, you know, every day that we had free during the shoot we were together and talking about the development of this character and Diana was so open and so trusting to really do the work 
um, to really understand what that character was. And that was really important. What most appealed to you about uh, the character? I just, uh, I think first and foremost, you always have to pick a script where you love the character in whatever ways that you love them in the story. And, and I think now at this point, it's like I just want to do things that are different because, um, because why else are we, are we doing this? You don't want to play the same characters over and over again. And I felt like it was a very important time as I'm kind of about to be exiting my 20s to really go back and capture that place where you are much more unsure and, 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 um, and vulnerable. And I just love the story that Natalia wrote and the character that she wrote. And, and I kind of you know, related to it in ways that I, I'm past it now, but that's definitely a place that I've been and, and can still go to depending on the day and what's happening yeah. during the course of events, you know? Now the film's a coming of age story, obviously, but it's also really a love story between your two characters and the chemistry between you two is just so electric. Um, did you have them screen test together and what led to, you know, cast these two great actors together? We didn't screen test together, but they are, s I feel like the story is uh, so much about these opposing worlds clashing or complementing, you know, com complementing each other that it was, they, you know, we met, you guys met on the first day of shooting, I think. Yeah. And it was pretty magical. You know, you only no. met on the first day? That's crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, first or second. Yeah, and I remember after we work. went to the club together. Yeah. yeah, first we did some research. We went to the. We the did some research. We went yeah. out drinking at the strip club. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's an initiation to get everybody warmed up. You know. <laughs> How many nights before the shoot was this? Oh, I mean, I showed up the night before. She like, started, started shooting. Yeah. Pepper Paz's character had, was started started to shoot a few days after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there were some days between that. You two are no doubt used to that, just showing up on set and having to meet your love interest in a film. How do you well, kind of get past that and actually work together and, sorry, yeah. I don't know, I kind of <laughs> predicted your question. Yeah, yeah, no, please. Um, no, I mean, uh, you know, what drew me to the script or any film I choose to do is like, I want to take that journey and, you know, I hadn't, it, you know, there's a lot of really crappy films being made right now. And this was a very, per given that it was Natalia's personal story, it was, you know, it says, right, uh, there's a great saying, write what you know, and, and she did. And, um, you know, I connected to the intimacy and the human, I, I like that it was about humanity and love and, you know, something made simple and, you know, uh, these two characters did not know one another, so it wasn't really important that we knew each other before we started filming. So, you know, the fact that we met on set, you know, Pepper is provocative and she's, you know, um, seemingly, to some people maybe mistrustworthy, but she's actually very vulnerable. And it was nice to hear in the Q&A last night that people could relate to her yeah. and that felt, felt for her because, you know, I, I feel like she's on the journey to have her heart be opened by somebody because she's been so j damaged yeah. and hurt. And, you know, Sarah comes into her life as a surprise and, you know, you know, she's a drug dealer and she's a drifter and she lives this hard knock life and like, you know, I ate Cheetos and I made myself fat and like, <laughs> you no, know, like, really like fat. <laughs> I was, I had a, I had a, like a, a, a gut, you know, and, gut. and, 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 you know, I just felt like, you know, it was, in, it was important, I mean, just to, I mean, and being in New Mexico and in this, small town where you already, I mean, where nothing happens. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you, you kind of, you're there, you know? And then, you know, to be, excuse my language, fucked over, over and over again in life, and then meet someone like Sarah, who's pure, you know, she opened her heart, you know, as like a little inkling of hope. So, you know, it, it happened organically as much as it did on screen. Can I just say, I want Paz to do a comedy because she's really funny. She's hilarious. <laughs> I was laughing out loud during most of that. 
I don't think I'm funny. Oh, you're very funny. I think people laugh at me. No. no. It's okay. It's the delivery of the line. I don't it's mind. Gotta... No, but I really, I mean, it did, it was like a painting in a painting. <laughs> <laughs> And there was this script and then there was some improv and so many amazing, hilarious, ingenious lines came out of Paz oh, on really? my writing, so. Oh, <laughs> nice. No, well, it was scripted and then there was a few things that were sort of thrown in there. Okay, there's yeah. some great lines in a pool scene, yeah. which I won't give well, away. Well, but some of those lines are this really good writing. Yeah. One of the favorite lines of the whole film, I feel like, is in that pool scene. So you guys, go, go, go see it for the pool scene. <laughs> So do you encourage uh, improvising on set? Is that something that you like your actors doing? Yeah, for sure, because I think filmmaking is such an organic thing that you're telling a story and it's, you're trying to imitate real life. And if you're too stuck on this script and this plan that you involved, it's just, that's like a certain kind of film, you know? Yeah. And maybe that works for like Wes Anderson in his style, but for us and for the work that, you know, Alexander and I have done together, we do a lot of improv because it's like, you write out this very tight script and then on set, you fill it out. And if it's not working, you just, have to be open to just working on the spot and mm -hmm. organically feeling it out and writing out new material. Okay. Were you, any of you familiar with the world of strip clubs before embarking on this project? I was. You were? Yeah. How so? Well, I played, I played a stripper in Enter the Void. Yeah, of course. Gaspar Noyes film. You know, but it was a very different experience. Yeah. You know, because um, the strip clubs in Tokyo and the world he created, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's a very different world. This is a truck stop strip club. Um, I think it has a rumor that this is where strippers go to get killed. Wow. No. I, I heard there that. was a website that called it a place where strippers go to die, but that was just that was just a place that reviews uh, strip clubs. You uh, know what I mean? Uh, it was right. like it, because it's, it's a yeah, it's not your <laughs> usual club. That's for yeah. sure. Why is that? Natalia and I went and lived there for a few weeks, and we made a, a documentary for Vice um, called "Every Woman: Life of a Truck Stop Stripper" because Natalia had gone and scouted this location for Bear. We went together and then we ended up creating this, this other piece where we lived there and we met all the people there and we actually casted um, some of the actual dancers who oh, wow. are in the film, uh, a girl named Kelly that plays Diana and then another woman named Mocha and um, we Jeanette. felt... And Janae, yeah. Janae. So there's a lot of real people that we actually met from the community that are in the film, which was really important for us and also it was important to really feel authentic like we weren't just two New Yorkers going into this small town and trying to figure out what it meant to be from there we actually went and lived in a room infested with flies with the, the shower didn't work and we danced on the stage and our knees got bruised and you know you danced we, on we, the stage yeah I wow. mean we danced for two weeks uh, you know we got chased we shot machine guns you know so <laughs> by the time we came to shoot bear we're like we kind of understand this world yeah. like maybe a little bit um <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean I think it was important for us to um, also just involve the community you know mm -hmm. with that we were still in touch with a lot of the people there some of them came out to the premiere and you know, it's just, yeah, it was really important to us. Like, so many of the people in the film and the extras in the club were just real people who had come Real to patrons. Know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. And they just came and hung out, like, all day for free. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm curious for the cast what that was Diana. like to work with real-life locals who know this place, know this kind of world. It must have helped you, no doubt. Yeah, I think it definitely helped. And, um, you know, it's just interesting because there's, there's so many preconceived notions you can have about this. And... And, you know, I've been to strip clubs all over the world and like, you know, Europe, America, whatever. And, and uh, you know, being there is one thing, but being on stage is one thing. And, you know, Natalia challenged me to go one night before everybody knew who I was and, you know, went and dressed up and put a wig on and put shoes on this high and, you know, had on a bikini top and shorts and just going and talking to the people because this is a place where truckers are passing through. Like every night you see the semis come in and it's just so weird because it's so transient and you know you go around and I'd sit down and talk to people who would be like what what are you doing here I've been here I haven't seen you or like you look too young you look too innocent you look too this to be here when are you getting up to dance yeah and then when I got on stage those people that were like go on go on go on were the people that couldn't come up mm -hmm. and come to the stage and and actually everybody was so nice there was like this weird apprehension because you completely control that situation if you're telling them to close come closer they'll come closer one guy was like 
can I put a bill here? And I was like, yeah, but here. Mm. And he was like, okay. And it was like, it probably took all the fun out of it for him. But it's just, it's interesting. It's like, you know, uh, I guess I've never, in some ways, I was telling some of my friends, it's like one of the weirdest kind of, like, I maybe felt the most powerful, it was one of my most powerful feeling moments in my life. Wow. And it's not what you would suspect. Yeah, you, know? you weren't expecting that. The men no. in Japan weren't like that. The what? <laughs> the men in Japan were not like that. They were so drunk and they attacked me on stage and I felt totally violated. Really? Yeah. So two very different experiences. Very different worlds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now about shooting in New Mexico, there's a wonderful sequence where you're high on drugs. I'm not sure which drugs you're high on. And you have a snake slither up your neck, around your face, and you're totally dazed out. You don't even move. Um, how did you pull that off and what did you have to do to convince Diana to, to do this scene? Well, I was worried because I didn't tell her about the snake until like she was already in the film. You wow. know, because I was like, okay, there's going to be nudity, there's going to be this. And then, <laughs> and how do you feel about snakes? And she was like, I'm totally great, I love snakes. Um, and she did because the snake, we weren't sure, of course it's totally unpredictable yeah. as an animal. And um, it was really hot, we were shooting in the desert and snakes don't respond well to that kind of weather. Um, they it's preferable to shoot it either early, early morning or late afternoon, so it's mm -hmm. cool. Um, but the snake just, you were humming. The snake was just in love with Diana. And the snake was blind, which was kind of amazing. So it's just, it's feeling its way around her, like just from the sense of it. So it was maybe one of the most magical things to watch happen, and I think that I think hopefully people will really enjoy that scene yeah. because Diana is so... She was totally fearless. Yes, yeah, such, such a although, boss. <laughs> although, the guy that brought the snake, I feel like, why would you say this to somebody? <laughs> He's okay. like, well, first of all, he had like one of those sticks, so he took it out of the box and like, placed it on me with the stick. And he's like, this snake hasn't bitten anybody for a really long no. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you're about to put that right here on me. Yeah. Maybe tell me that later. I don't know. And so the like, I've held snakes before, but the snake was going like behind my yeah. neck and it, like, it did like you. twice. It, it was you. going up my face, <laughs> going here, going back down or whatever. And the humming was, uh, coping mechanism because at one point I was like, this could go really badly. Yeah. Um, but then I realized that like once I got past that initial moment, it was. It was one of the coolest experiences ever because the snake was just like right here and I was humming and the, your eyes are closed and it just, it was a really, really cool and special moment yeah. with a snake. I'm hoping it was just one take you put her through. Well, it went on for a while because we thought the time. snake was just going to give up. The snake wrangler was like, he's going to maybe do it for a minute and then he's going to sliver off and that's the end of your shot, you know. But I think you he were just, just lying there for 10 her. minutes yeah. and we just kept rolling because we we're like, this is great. This is yeah. great. This is we're not how much footage we need, but, you know. <laughs> it's an incredible massage. Yeah. Having a snake <laughs> Have you had it done? Snake massage. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I've worked with snakes okay. before. I have a snake tattoo. Um, oh, yeah. Cobra. Oh, it's beautiful. For Kundali, Kundalini energy, the Kundalini rising. Yeah. And, um, I actually worked with snakes a week ago, um, three snakes, and I don't know how you felt, but didn't it feel good? I mean. Yeah, well, I think to be that connected with an animal, yeah. you know, because it's just people you can reason with or whatever, but animals are completely there just picking up. Vibes. Your vibes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wanted to search for a different <laughs> word. Let's just go there. Vibes. It's about the vibes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Now, one thing I have to point out is um, this is the second film in which I moderated a panel where the, they have a female director, writer, female producer, and a main female cast, and it's just awesome. And Tribeca, I think this year, um, yeah, let's get a round of applause. Yeah. And Tribeca, when they first released the lineup, you know, they made a big point to note that this is the year of the female filmmaker for the festival. I'm not what sure about, about next percentage. Year or last well, no, year? but like of the most <laughs> Only this so year? far. Yeah, yeah, so you far. You know, like the yeah. start of finally some, some right. changes, which is wonderful. Um, for the actors, you know, this isn't commonplace. What was it like to, to work with the mostly all female um, top line crew? It must have been such an appeal to you for, you know, taking on this project. Yeah, I think um, 
I think that that definitely is is always something that if everything else is lining up and that's you know a woman is at the helm of it there is like I always find a little bit of an extra kind of you know love for it or or enthusiasm for it Um, because it isn't common and and there's so many reasons for that and um, you know that's going to be but that's not just in this industry that's everywhere that's that's a long going battle that that you know I don't foresee changing very (laughs) soon Um, but you know it's just I think it it is it's these two women I, I remember my manager called and was like they're so fucking fearless you know and you can't like you can't doubt that every day they're on set uh with the most supreme uh energy and kindness and care and thought and um and that's not just because you're women that's just because of the people that you are and so i just think it's nice when that's something that you can walk away for and be like it's not gender specific it's just who they are they are yeah. as artists yeah. yeah i feel like natalia i mean the place in which the the trucker strip you know club could have been potentially not a very inviting Atmosphere. space yeah. you know and um, the guy who owns the place um, was very happy to have you film his film there. And for me, it was kind of a trip, you know, after playing a stripper in, you know, directed by a man. You know what? I'm not going to put him in a category. Gaspar is a genius, period. Um, you know, but directed you know, what, a few years ago as a stripper. But he made sure that I felt not safe at all. And um, what I felt about this space was that it was safe. And then Natalia really made, you know, that the owner of the club was inviting and the girls that worked there were excited and it was like, it was exciting. They were all. They were. They. They're as big a, a part of this as everyone up here. Yeah. I mean, I wish they were here right now. I mean, the stories and 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 the things I learned from those women. I mean, I can never forget. I mean, you never know. You know the cards that God's gonna. De- there was one woman who had been a a school teacher and you know was teaching chemistry and somehow started. Uh, you know, getting into meth, then baking meth, then got caught, you know, got tested by the school. And at 45 years old, started dancing there, you know. And, you know, she she started dancing there because it's the only place she could get a job so she could take care of her son, you know. And she's desperately trying to kick the habit. But, you know, and, and, and then to come in it as a, you know, Pepper's not a drug addict. She's a drug dealer. Yeah. So, you know, dealing with these women and and hearing their stories was it was compelling and it was in, inspiring. And you know, you just can't judge anyone. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was so important to just not judge them or where they're coming from because everyone's on their own path and there's a reason why they ended up there. And you know, so long as you're not hurting someone and of course, you shouldn't be hurting yourself either, but you know, it's you're on you're on your journey. And, yeah. You know that was important, and we're still in touch with a lot of those women. And, okay, yeah. that's wonderful. Now, Diana, your character experiences an emotional breakdown um, in the climax of the film, and it's such a harrowing moment. Some of the best acting I've seen from you. Um, just a really, really wonderful and accomplished scene. Can you talk about what led up to that moment? How you reached that kind of emotional crescendo, if you will. I mean, I think Chris Zilka is an incredible actor, and he's somebody that I knew before filming. Uh, we share some mutual friends and a manager, and um, and again, like being on this set in these hands, like, and also too, just uh, at that point, we had been filming for a couple of weeks, and it just felt so real, even though, you know you go to set and you put on these clothes and then you leave and you go home. Just 
that moment felt so awful. Um, and like you're just your skin is crawling and everything and 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 lucky that I had a scene partner such as Chris that you know just really like he doesn't he doesn't phone it in yeah. and that's really it's really special. Awesome. Uh, we're gonna open up to the audience. So if you have a question, please raise your hand, and we have mics on either end. Hey, I have uh, tickets to see your movie tomorrow. I'm so stoked to see it. I think all of you are rad for making this such a female-empowered movie. I'm so excited. And I just want to know, as an audience member, what do you guys hope that I take away from seeing this passion project for all four of you, honestly? And thank you. Um, well, I think that I don't want to boil it down to a message because I want people to go in there with the fresh eyes and fresh perspective and, and get what makes sense that you can apply to your life. Um, but I hope that I, you know, through making this project, we've seen other people that have been a part of the project sort of be touched by the fact that this is a lead character who's um, realizing that the place, situation she was born into, um, that she has a lot of alternatives in life, you know, that she doesn't have to follow the footsteps of the people around her, um, and that she can paint her own reality completely, you know, um, and that I hope that that is inspiring for other people, that sort of challenges people to make bold choices in their life too. Um, you know, stripping has always brought up a big debate about, you know, exploitation and uh, empowerment. I'm glad you guys addressed it a little bit uh, here in the discussion. So in making the film, did you come to any further conclusions? I know you spoke a little bit about it and you spoke a little bit about it that now you've, if you meet other strippers and all, will you engage them in a conversation about these issues or where does it, where do you feel you lie now and do you feel you're, you're doing something to make people aware of stripping in another context? I'd like, love to hear from the four of you. Um. Can I talk about stripping? <laughs> um, well, when I did um, Enter the Void, I auditioned 40 girls um, before I chose who would be my teacher. And um, I, uh, what I learned, I learned something different from each girl. First of all, it's an art. It's, it's an art form, and, and, in, in, and in Japan, and, I mean, there was, there were some girls who had fake tits and orange tan and, you know, and it was like, they, they were really good acrobatically, but they weren't very sexy. And I mean, after about 30 girls, this girl came on and she was about five foot tall, pear-shaped. She just started to move. She moved like a snake and I just started to regard the French crew's observation. And they were like, whew, turned on, you know? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I want that to be my teacher. And um, she didn't speak a word of English. And, um, you know, it's hard work. And I have so much respect, you know? Um, but there's so many, you know, that compared to some of the women I met in New Mexico was totally different, you know? Some didn't really care much about what they put into their dancing skills. It was more about, okay, I need a quick buck because I need a quick fix. So I think it's like anything in life, you can't really judge a book by its cover. You gotta, you gotta talk to everybody. You don't know anybody. So. Yeah. I, I think also that, you know, people working in this world are very misunderstood and there's a lot of times it's portrayed in a male perspective and one thing that we realized going in there I mean we knew that it was emotionally damaging for some people and that you know other people might have felt empowered and that you know there was all, some people were doing it because they wanted to pay for their you know the life of their child and all of that but there was an other layers to it for instance there was this woman Daisy who is that we met there who worked at the club and she's in her 40s and you know, she actually has so much pride in what she does because she realizes that she's being a therapist to these men. And it's not about shaking her titties on stage. It's about actually being a person that these men who are truck, lonely truck drivers can talk to and who can, they can unload to. And 
that she felt like she was doing a good to humanity for that, you know? And that was so interesting to realize, oh wow, that's, she's right, you know? And that's maybe one of the more challenging parts about it is actually listening to these men's stories and being an open canvas for it, yeah. Hi, um, I had the chance to see the movie this morning and thought it was fantastic. Diana, I thought you specifically really stood out and it was really great to see you in a lead role and it was just a great performance. So congratulations to all of you on the premiere. Um, my question's for Natalia. I'm just curious how you came down to casting Diana and Paz. Like, were you watching an episode of Glee and were like, I want her while you were writing? Uh, just curious about the casting process and how you ended up um, getting to Diana and Paz. <laughs> Well, I think they're both incredibly talented actresses, so I knew that, and for this role, I wanted to cast um, two actresses who were, A, doing something that maybe they hadn't quite done like this before, that it would be a challenge to them, for one, um, and two, that they would, could be totally fearless and raw in this film, and they're exactly that, you know, I think they both committed 100% to the part, and they are, they are is so different in certain ways too and it was just like the perfect combination I think you know for um, for Diana she was Diana so confident and self-assured and poised in real life and she's you know just such a strong woman and she had to step into a role that was um, someone still figuring it out and a little bit insecure and you know that was new and refreshing for her and pause you know how I think you know has some connections to the character for sure and um, but just having to go into something where, you know, she couldn't use her sexuality to get what she want and she could be, you know, kind of um, s see this character like in a survival mode and have to struggle to, to make it work. And, and we were secretly watching Glee and, you know, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm really excited to see your, your film. Um, it's great that you guys are the producers, women. Um, I did an indie film, Gearheads, and I, I played a stripper, in, but it's a PG-13 role, <laughs> so we didn't get to actually strip and get too crazy. But there's so many amazing clubs when I did the research, too, at my various places, and I just, you might have mentioned it, but wh why did you end up in New Mexico? Like, what inspired you to go there as opposed to somewhere in New York or... Uh, well, New Mexico has Thank a good you. tax incentive for film, so that was like the number one. Oh wow! <laughs> you know, uh, hey, we needed money, so yeah. we went there. And this, I mean, the story took place in Nevada, but we couldn't. We shot some scenes in Reno, but the rest we we shot in New Mexico. And then um, I have some friends living in Albuquerque, spent some time there, getting to know the area, and met, ended up finding out about the strip club. So that sort of placed us in that town because it was near the club. Hi. So my question's for Diana. Um, What's so lovely about you is that you play characters recently that are so different from each other. Case in point, right here, you've been able to do so much as an actor in this film alone. But I was wondering if there's a role out there that you haven't played yet that you're itching to play, or when the compelling script falls into your lap, do you just know? Mm. Um, thank you. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's, there's a few, you know, um, I think childhood dreams, like, you know, I always loved like Edward Scissorhands and Rocky Horror and you know I love extreme costumes and big hair and things like that um, so I think there's a part of me that's dying to you know be on like a Tim Burton movie or something like that where I can just really go for it but um, I guess what I'm just discovering is, is like I guess as an artist, your career, it kind of, it all kind of comes in the times that you need it, you know, and like, I wasn't, like, uh, even the year before, because I did four indie movies last year, and the year before, I, I really didn't work much, um, and I was going through the loss of a friend, and I think it was really important, I had been working so hard up until that point, that it, it was so unrelentless, and I, and, you know, then in December, I, I had done these four things and I, I had loved the experience of each of them so much that I almost was fearful of another movie not living up to that. And so I said to my agent, I really want to do a play. And then these two plays came out of nowhere and the one stuck and, and now I'm, you know, I fly back tonight and I go to rehearsal from the airport and I'm like, how am I so lucky, you know? But it, it, I, I think if you're being true to yourself and, and where you should be, like 
you know, these guys, it's like, they, it's no joke, and, and Paws is directing, and you know, it, you just, you find what you need as an artist, and if you're, I think if you're really true to that, it just kind of comes, and, and then you just are very thankful. Now the play is McQueen, right? Yeah. Who do you play in that? Um, the play is called McQueen. It's it's about Alexander McQueen, but it's a fairy story. I play this girl Dahlia that goes to steal a dress, and he catches her, and they have this night together where you're kind of uncertain: uh, is she real? Is she not? Is you know? Um, and yeah, it's I'm shit scared, but uh, <laughs> but it's going well. So. Awesome. Hi, my question's for Diana. I'm a really, really big fan of yours in general, and I was just wondering, what do you think the best advice that someone has given you is? Uh, I think just be true to yourself. I think it's like an extension of, of the last question. I think there's so many times in this business where I'm sure like all of us can relate, where somebody tells you, you need to do this. I'm like, do I? I don't know. Um, and I feel like if you don't feel it, you're, f I keep wanting to, I'm like, we're getting punchy and I just want to keep swearing right now. I was like, you're fucked, but you are, you're fucked. Um, so yeah, I think, but that's in life too, you know. You want to go right, somebody tells you to go left, why are you going to go left, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Uh, first, you know, uh, Natalia, Alexander, you're so gorgeous, you can be actress too. Ah! We then uh, Paz, you were so funny. I love your snake tattoo. <laughs> then Diana, you, I'm your big fan. You were so fantastic. In, uh, I am number four. Oh, but thank you. You were so great in the family. Oh, so how was you. working with Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Tommy Lee Jones? Thank mm. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're amazing. <laughs> um, so so wonderful. I mean. You say it's it's kind of shocking because you always think, how can I leave an experience that was so wonderful and top it, and then like this one right here and this one right here and this one right here, like we had the best time, you know, and really found something so special. And uh, I think I think I'm I'm can't say we're because I'll be speaking for you, but I certainly feel very lucky. So yeah. Awesome. I know we have to end this, but thank you so much, and have a great rest of the trip.